Welcome to Homerati. There's a lot going on right now. Uh, Johnny's here with us today. What's going on? Well, actually, I was going to be like, I'm Adam. Look <laughs> at how much weight it gained. We are in a new studio. We are in transition at the moment. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, we're in a new space and we're going to be renovating. So right Well, now, we no, won't be. We won't Somebody be. Else but will it'll be. be all fresh next time. I'll direct. And then the other thing we want to talk about is actually why Johnny's here. He's filling in for Adam um, because last week he had a big scare. Uh, he actually had an issue with his heart, as you guys know and it kind of would stop beating, and so he went to the emergency, and uh, long story short, he ended up having to get a pacemaker, pacemaker. put in. Mm. Yeah. So did you go visit him? I did, yes. Did you go he visit wouldn't him? let me. Oh, tell yeah. me, that's a lie. I you let a, everybody no, I was Facebook. a block Here's away. No, I was everything. a block away, and I'm like, I'm coming. He's like, no. no he, I'm like, I'm coming. No, I'm like, I'm a block away. I yeah. literally can see in your window. He's like, no. The, the first day that uh, he was at St. Paul's, and he was, you know, it was, he was scared, I could, yeah. I could really tell. Oh. So the next day when he got the news that he did have to get a permanent pacemaker put in, he didn't want to see anybody because he was just didn't want people to see him so oh. upset. So, um, but yeah, then the next day he had visitors all day. And yeah, I went over there. The best story is so he's laying in bed and I'm like trying to comfort him. Like he didn't need it, but I just felt that mothering nature that I have. And so I'm trying to tuck him in and he went to go adjust and I saw something through his... You know how they have the gowns that are yeah. quite open. Yeah. It's like, oh man, <laughs> really? Like no is, underwear. No <laughs> underwear. And this but that's not Adam. new for him. I he know. never wears <laughs> so. But it was, you know, I think he's in good spirits and he'll be back. And, and he'll uh, be yeah, we're fine. thinking about you. We love you. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's move on to gossip. And the first thing that we're going to talk about is the Grammys. Let's take a look at some of the best moments. Lucky right down both ways. Ugly waving your hand out the window. Check yourself. We are gathered here to celebrate love and harmony in every key and every color. As I look out on this audience, I'm delighted to see the faces of 33 couples who've chosen this moment to celebrate their vows with us here in Los Angeles and everyone watching around the world as witnesses. So what was your guys' favorite part? Gosh, there was we so watched, many. We, we watched, watched it together, together which okay. was great. Oh, nice. um, I think um, there were some things I liked that you didn't. There were some things you liked that I definitely didn't. Yeah. But I think the thing we both loved was um, Imagine Dragons and... Kendrick Lamar. Oh, oh my God. That was very good. What, oh. a, what, a, what a weird pairing, and it turned out to work so well. Um, and then what was the other one? I really loved Pink and what's his nuts until he started screaming like yeah, a yeah. cat. Yeah, yeah, Nate's so fun. <laughs> and we're like, what is he doing? Like, yeah. live, it wasn't as good. I'm a little bit over Pink in the aerials, so I'll just be honest. Like, oh. I get it. I think it's beautiful, but I've seen it so much that I'm like, okay, next. Yeah. Um, I was really looking forward to the Stevie Wonder set, and of course, this is terrible, but Stevie can't see, and I'm assuming he had an ear to prompt him, but... They, his mic wasn't working. And Pharrell was oh. like, even singing, and he was like, okay, go Stevie, and we were like, but he's he can't pointing, see you. He can't see you, it's Stevie Wonder. Oh. So that was a bit awkward. Yeah. Obviously the Queen Latifah part was just outstanding. I'm interested to hear Tommy's opinion on this because he, time and time again, continually tells us that he hates You know what, here's, here's the thing. And oh yeah, he I have, okay, I have a very strong opinion about that moment with the Grammys. But I will keep it to myself because it was no, thirty no, talk. No, 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 but that's all. So your opinion's not changed at all. I'm, you know what? I, ha I just because... What's your beef? Okay, I'm new, so give me the beef. <sighs> I don't know. I think what I get from him is he thinks that Macklemore is only doing this song because it's gimmicky, it's it's a trend, it's, you know, he's and jumping onto the bench. Not change, band. right? He's but there's like, and there's another thing, like Ronan Farrow tweeted, and I, I, was, I was trying to figure out what would be a really good way to kind of explain how I feel about that song and that whole situation. And Ronan Farrow tweeted, he's like, for a song that's all about pro-gay and gay love, it really is making sure that we all know he's really straight. Do you know what I mean? So I don't really, no, I don't, I don't get, get that, that But that's fine, and I don't like it. And, and I'm glad that you and Mia Farrow sung are on the same page yeah. of the song. Gay <laughs> for their wedding. At the end of the day, it was just a really big stunt. And I mean, I love, all stood I, love, I love a stunt. Yeah. But I just, my, I don't know. My opinion is that, I mean, sure, it's a stunt, but at the same time, when you have that much power and influence in the media, yeah. to use it for something good like that, to get some message out rather than no message. Oh, you know what, for me, I'm just, if I don't, say, if I don't have anything <laughs> nice to say, I won't say anything at all. Okay, well, that's all we have for gossip. When we come back, we're gonna move on to music. Welcome back, we're moving on to music now, and the first person that we're gonna talk about is Kylie Minogue. She's got her new single, Into the Blue. Let's give it a listen. So that 
was her lyric video that she mm -hmm. just has out. And I mean, what do you guys think of this song? So well, far? first of all, we all know how I feel about a lyric video. Just release <laughs> a video. Um, I really like this song. I am such a fan of Kylie. I kind of feel like she can do she can do no wrong yeah. for me. Mm -hmm. um, but I really like the song. I mean, it's 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 typical Kylie. I'm excited. Yeah. She's got this is her twelfth album coming out with this, right? I believe so. Yeah, it's yeah. coming out shortly. Like yeah, in March. In March. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'm stoked about it. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think it's just you know formulaic Kylie. She, she's uh -huh. following what works, and it's good. And it's she's. I feel like she still looks and sounds the same as she did. And you know what's funny with her is when I when I hear her music, I always think I'm like she can't be sound like that live, but she actually sounds better live than Have she you does seen her album. Either? I've, I've never, never seen, seen her live in either. person, no. which was my biggest regret of when did she tour North America? Like three years ago. Three, four. One years of my ago? biggest regrets of that year was not going to San Francisco and going to see her. But um, I just know from like when she sings live at her concerts or or whatever, she sounds great. It's gonna be a big year for her because she's on the X Factor as well too as a judge, right? What? She is? Yeah, isn't she X Factor no, UK? Danny Danny? No, no, Danny? Kylie. Is... No, she's the voice. Oh well, this. Whatever. She's on one of those singing songs. Yeah, she's I'm pretty sure. on one of those singing songs. Okay. I, I thought she so. just replaced her sister, but nice. No, if she's not. on X Factor, oh my god. You'll start streaming that <laughs> too, Tommy. I always do, but I'm so excited. <laughs> Maybe I'm just putting numbers, but okay. The next song we're gonna talk about is by Anise K and Lance Bass. It's called Walking on Air. Let's check out the music video. <laughs> Here's the story. So Go. I first heard this song um, uh, when we posted it on the blog, and I was like, where's his voice? I didn't hear his voice. And then I watched the video, and I was like, oh, he's, that's his, he's singing yeah, the whole time. Yeah. Is it really his single, though? She sounds it's, great. It's the guy who's He playing... doesn't sound bad. He's just a backup singer, essentially, is what I'm thinking. Like, he's, he's, it's not really his single. It's not his breakup it's, single. It's like featuring him. Right, and Snoop Dogg. And... Yeah. It's such a weird <laughs> It's a very mix like whenever people. Snoop Dogg comes on board as a secondary, like a T Pain or a supporting cast, it's a little bit like really? Like it's a very like Meryl Streep and Fifty Cent being friends. Like it's just an mm. unexpected. But that's what he does. I mean he's on what was it uh, for Katy Perry? Like, it was also on, Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, California Girls. California Girls, Girls. yeah. Well she has a is It's just such a weird mix of people. I actually like the song though. I don't mind it. I heard it and I, re I remember. <laughs> but I like her. I'm just always like Lance Bass, go to space. Like it's time. Get a get an endorsement deal for No No. Well, Do something Anise, else. Like you're not really a singer. I'm sorry. Well, Anise, true. Anise yeah. uh, K is actually I think the guy who's making the music. He's not actually singing at so all. Who's the girl it's uh, Bella. So her guy, name is Bella Blue, and she's the guy in that weird. Uh, that weird yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So, okay. And the last one that we're going to talk about is called Once Upon a Dream, and it is. Featured in the soundtrack for Maleficent. 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 I knew I was Maleficent. Gonna say it right. <laughs> that was okay, Patrick. Whatever. Take a look. The trailer for Maleficent. Oh, Maleficent. <laughs> oh, Maleficent. <laughs> I love Maleficent. when you try. Like, you gotta give them points for trying. I know. Uh, so, I um, have gone, I think I've talked about on this show how much I really despise Lana Del Rey. I feel among like. Among other people. Though. Among other people. But I feel like everything she does is so forced and she so doesn't wanna do it and she would rather be anywhere else. This song is great. Even though it's just like, even though she still sings, like it's so difficult for her to get it. Up. Yeah. But I love it. It really fits with the new, um, the new way they're gonna do Sleeping Beauty. Like it's a little bit darker. Oh, yeah. It's a little yeah. bit more grown it's up. Creepy, it's a little right? bit it's creepy. creepy. Yeah, haunting is the word. Haunting. haunting. Before I even knew that it was Lana Del Rey that was singing, I wa had seen that trailer and I actually thought it was Angelina Jolie singing because she they kind of sound a little they, bit similar. She sounds like, like singing she, Lana Del Rey <laughs> sounds like how Angelina Jolie. Would look like looks like she sounds <laughs> yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I heard that yeah. Angelina Jolie actually picked her to sing the song, so I don't know. It's oh. a great. I think it's a great um, team up. I re I just I, I honestly I post. I'm like I cannot believe I'm saying this, but the song's actually magnificent. Yeah. It's a masterpiece. It's what? It's maleficent. <laughs> <laughs>
I need new co-host. <laughs> Send to Tommy at Homerazzi. <laughs> Get real. Get Tommy, whatever. <laughs> whatever. Okay, well, we're obviously done with music. We're going to move on to movies. And the first one that we have up is the remake of RoboCop. Take a look at the trailer. We're going to put a man inside a machine. Time to wake him up. Make him more tactical. Let's go with black. Quality control, EM-208 versus Tin Man. Wow. We are going to make a lot of money. I wasn't sure what to think when I heard that this movie was being remade because they've they had that TV show that came out that was sort of a Ro RoboCop remake. It was and a then, series, right? Yeah, it was, it was a 30, series and it was 30 second yeah. or 30 minute increment kind of yeah. episodic show. But this actually looks good. I think that they did a really you good You think it looks good? I think it kind of looks good. I, I remember watching the original and I was really into it. And well, Yeah, but you were like when, five. That's why you were into it. When did the original come out? 80s, right? It was late, late 80s. Late 80s? Yeah. He's got a new look. Which he's, I'm, a, he's black. Which I'm kind of into. Yeah. Like, like he's, the, uh, sorry, the, his, his armor his is black. Armor. Like, black. <laughs> when he opens the mask, he's white, but he's black <laughs> otherwise and shiny. So I'm kind yeah. of into that. I just, I have this, why are they remaking everything? I have such a problem with remakes. Like, don't you have any new ideas? But I guess it's like a new generation and whatever. Robocop's stupid. I, like, I'm glad that you <laughs> want to go see it and you're supporting that. That's great, Patrick. I don't think a lot of people are that excited about I don't about think so movie. either. I, I yeah. mean... I, I guess if you're like a major nerd kind of fan, that's cool, but... I'll probably watch it on iTunes or something, but I won't watch it in theaters. No. no. You'd no, be no, too no. embarrassed. <laughs> it, it, I mean, I, it, it may be one of those movies that does really good the first weekend and then just completely drops off, but yeah. I don't really know. Okay, well, let's move on to the next trailer, and the backdrop here is a little bit of a hint. <laughs> Take a look. Guys, wait up! Where am I? Come with me if you want to not die. What is happening? You're the special. And the prophecy states that you're the most important person in the universe. That's you, right? Uh, yes. That's me. Relax, everybody. I'm here. Batman? Awesome! Who are you here to see? I'm here to see your butt. Oh, my gosh. Uh, pow. Wham. <laughs> First try. And that is the Lego movie. Uh, uh, so really? Yeah, I'm so excited. Really? Yeah, oh my it looks, god, it looks so funny. And it, it reminds you of like some of the fun things you loved as a kid and the cartoonishness of it. Oh. I'm actually shocked that you don't want to see it. Well, time. so I saw the trailer in San Diego when I went last summer and I was like, oh, this, uh, this is a movie? And I'm just like, how are you making Lego into a movie? But I guess it's There's just Lego a bunch of characters. of the yeah. people. I don't know. There's well, so many stars in it, too. So uh, many. Jonah Hill, Channing Tatum, Elizabeth Banks. And it's going like, to be huge. Like, this movie is, is going to be really popular. I think everyone is going to go see it. I just, I haven't latched onto it yet. I don't really, there's no reason to hate it for me yet. Yeah. But I just haven't latched onto yeah. it. I just kind of feel like, oh, it's coming out. I will say, oh, also, no, no, no. Uh, my radio station was doing the movie premiere. And it's funny because generally on, like, a Wednesday or Thursday, we'll do a premiere. And but if it's geared for a child movie-ish... They'll do it on a Saturday morning, and that's what we had for that premiere. So I was like, it sounds like they're kind of gearing it for a youthful audience. But there's such like an adult. We love all that yeah. stuff. Cast yeah. and like, who's in it? Like Will Ferrell. Yeah. Like, isn't Katy Perry in it? Well, who she knows? does the Maybe. voice of someone. I think. Maybe. She's Smurfette, but anyway, <laughs> I look forward to it. I know, okay. and you wanted to go see it too, right? Patrick? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Let me know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the next movie we're going to talk about is The Monument Men. Take a look. You can destroy an entire generation of people's culture. It's as if they never existed. We got company. Frank, we gotta go! That's what Hitler wants. And it's the one thing we can't allow. So we get to shoot some Nazis? It's your responsibility now. I've never shot at anyone before. He really wanted it all. So a lot of good people in this movie. Yeah, we got George Clooney. Um, Kate Blanchett, Matt Damon. And uh, you know who I really look forward to? I don't really care about them. John Goodman from Roseanne. Yeah. I, oh, yeah. I, I love John He's such a Goodman. good character actor, and I really don't care about this movie. I'm like, oh, whatever. It's very oh. like periodical to me, and I don't really care about wars and things, but I love <laughs> I love him as a character actor. Yeah, it's, I think it's based on a true story, so it's uh, a group of people that were sent out to sort of get all the artifacts back that the Nazis were stealing from yeah. the Jews. And saving it, right? Yeah, like, they, well, they wanted to get, I think they wanted to get rid of it so that they would have no history and just erase their history. That's terrible. Yeah. Rude. 
Yeah. <laughs> it feels like, I mean, based on the cast, it feels like one of those, like... I feel like it's Ocean's Eleven. <laughs> Actually, one. that's a good like, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. one, isn't it? Now we're back in time. Yeah. Like, all right, except for on a more except, serious... Instead of, yeah, instead of Julia Roberts, they have Kate Blanchett, so it's going to, like, up it a bit acting-wise. <laughs> so. so when we come back, we are going to move on to TV. <laughs> Just hearing you sing and play a lovely melody in a quiet, elegant way is refreshing. And that bodes well for you because <laughs> not a lot of people do that anymore. Yay. It's a nice feeling for me to hear something very subtle and, and elegant like that. Welcome back. We're moving on to TV now. And that was just a clip from American Idol, the new season. You guys are watching, right? Yeah. I'm like on and off watching. I caught one week and then I did it the next week. Tommy, oh. you have to commit. Well, I'm kind of busy. I love seeing J-Lo back. I love the fashion. I like that everything she wears, I feel like I could go to Target and get the same outfit if I was a chick. Like, it's cool. But the star of that new panel is Harry, Harry Connick, Connick Jr. Jr. Yeah, yeah, he just tells it like it is, right? First of all, he's so handsome. He's like, charming. He's so charming. He's so funny. He appeals to the parents, and yet he's funny enough for the kids to, like, think he's cool, you know what I mean? Yeah, oh, I think man. we're kind of over it, but it's still like good to watch the beginning of it and see the chemistry, and who knows, maybe we'll find somebody, but it's like, eh, American Idol. I kind of feel like everyone's, they've, they've chosen. They've, we've seen all the best ones, yeah. you know what I mean, don't you? Um, did you see the one with uh, season one contestant, Nikki McKibben? Oh, her, her hot son. son, yeah, the hot son. He's 15. Well, like he's gonna be a hot <laughs> person, like, okay, I'm just saying, he's, a, he's an attractive, youthful man growing up. Yeah. Why don't we take a look? Well, the first time I made an appearance, I guess you could say, was when I was four years old. I gave my mom a rose when she was on stage. What's your little boy's name? Tristan. Tristan. Thanks for being here, buddy. Hi, baby. Her being up there just inspired me to start singing. I wanted that, to make people happy and just to love what I do. Well, first of all, I mean, sure, I'm, he'll, give, he'll be fine yeah. in five years. And a hot mom, it's a good indication. Uh, mom is not hot. Mom is missing teeth. <laughs> well, she was in rehab. You can't blame her for that. that. I'm just saying she looks pretty you know good what? for I, being I mean, she, how old is she? She's, she's like... I think she's like a teen mom, so I'd say she's, she's probably she's like, like 30, late 30s. Or early 30s, honey, because he, he's 15. So she's, I think she's like 15, because he was, he was four when she was on Idol. Like and that was 10 ago. years ago. Like 10 years ago. Twelve? And she was young. And she has no teeth now. She, can you get over the no, no teeth? teeth? No. Really, Tommy? <laughs> really? Okay, well, let's move on to oh another show. The next show we're going to talk about is called Chosen. It's a new show on FX. It's an adult comedy. Take a look. In hip-hop, <laughs> you're on top. Yeah. Or you're on bottom. Cool okay. kids. We's on the road to the Grammys. Who you know gives a shit about the Grammys except white people and Kanye West? <laughs> From the creators of Eastbound and Down. What the? That's cocaine, weed, machine guns, and a passed out horn with a coat. Oh, boy. And Archer. Ten years. They took a lot away from me. Chosen. Chosen for what? Nah, stupid. That's my name. So I haven't been watching any of these cartoons. No. Um, but I, I tried. This is this is done by the same people who did Archer, yeah. right? Yeah. Which is huge. Archer is huge. It's on I, Netflix. You can watch it now. It's I tried. Easy. I really tried and I really wanted to like it, but I just, it's not one of those shows that I really paid attention to or yeah. I wanted to pay attention to. Yeah, or you, to. you care if you miss it. Or I care yeah. if I miss it. Yeah. So, um, the thing I like about this is this, is the voice of Chosen, who is... This, Bobby Moynihan. Yeah, like, SNL. One of my favorite people from SNL, yeah. Drunk Uncle, yeah. <laughs> is me. Like, I love Bobby Moynihan. He's yeah. so funny. So I'm glad that he's I'm glad that he's on it. I love that you think you're Drunk Uncle, because uh, you've seen Tommy at the club, right? Like, <laughs> drunk Uncle. Night. He is a little bit Drunk Uncle, and you're like, yeah. Tommy, it's, it's yeah. fine. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I'm going to be Drunk Uncle for Halloween. You watch. Yeah, he's actually the reason why I'd probably give the show a shot. But totally. I, but so far, but I just I'm kind of not into like I want my cartoons to be cartoons. Like, little, it's a little bit of a dark look to it. Yeah, right? I'm like so. I want my kid, my cartoons to be more for younger and less youthful. Yeah, and, yeah. 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 easy. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well this next show I think we'll all agree on. It's a new show called Looking on HBO. Mm. Take a look. Starting up a new team network. As in, you could be my new boss. Well, that sounds very formal, but uh, yeah. I'm sure you were fine. No, I asked that my boss while straddling a torpedo. <laughs> and he said no. <laughs> Look what we're finding out about each other. So what do you think? Can I pull this off? <laughs> we're your friends. 
We were in this together. We've seen the first two episodes. Now we've seen the first few episodes. Um, and what do you think? I love it. I think um, the actors are great. The storyline is great. It's all believable. It's relatable to mm -hmm. you know the gay culture. Um, and yeah, it's, it's very funny. And it's also like you can just relate to a lot of the situations that they're going through. So um, the, I like looking. I mean, it's a lot of people are already sounding off about it on Facebook. I love it. I hate it. Da, da, da. It's, in my opinion, one of the best representations of that part of gay life. Yeah. Yes, because we had Queer as Folk a long time ago. Yeah. And, and that was sort of, at that time, it was Yeah, it was exactly. really yeah. clubby and really, yeah. but this one is, is totally different. I really liked the, um, they handled the threesome really well in the first episode. Yeah. Yep. They also really handled that grinder hookup perfectly. <laughs> that was, yeah, actually that was pretty good. When that kid walks in, oh my God, I love your apartment. Your view <laughs> is so amazing. I have said that to people that I've- You did not. Yes, oh my God, your apartment's you so nice. <laughs> you said and that. And then boom, right into it. But it was just, I was watching, I'm like, oh my God, it's so true. And there are parts in that show that make me feel very uncomfortable, yeah. just like real life. But my favorite part, it was at the end of episode two, when he's talking to, um, what's his name? Patrick is talking to the other, uh, Augustine. Yeah. Yes. Um, and he's eating mac and cheese, and he's like, oh yeah, oh yeah, kale like, salad. 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 salad with, with chicken. chicken. I've done that before. <laughs> that, like, who yeah. hasn't done that yeah. before? And he's yeah. eating like his mom's ultimate mac and cheese. Like, yeah. it is, that was cute. it's really good. Um, it's kind of, it's kind of, it's good. It's not yeah. great. It's nothing mind blowing yet. But it can build. But it can build. Okay, well, we're gonna move on from TV onto gay news. And the first thing that we're gonna talk about is a number of people that have been hating on the gays lately. Haterade. Yeah. So let's uh, talk about the first one, uh, Sherry Shepard. Yep. On The View. Um, she was in an interview with someone and she said, she said something kind of weird. I actually have it here if you okay, want me to yeah, read it. Yeah, I want to read it because it's okay. really weird. You grow up being a Christian and you grow up believing in homosexuality is a sin. You're going to hell if you're homosexual. That is something that they teach us in, in churches. So it's something that I grew up believing. I might not agree with your lifestyle, but I love you. You may not agree with my lifestyle, but you love me. I mean, I don't really love her anymore. I yeah. still love her. Why? Hands down. I, I love what she said. I agree with her full. Like, really? Absolutely. No. Hands down. You know no. what? I... Yeah, I don't, I don't see why that, this created such an uproar. Yeah, I kind of agree with you. I think I mean, she's being well, she's honest. Like, no, but she's essentially essentially saying, I don't agree with your lifestyle. You're going to hell. No, 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 no. That's not what she's saying. She said she grew up believing that, but she doesn't think she still respects us. And she's like, you can respect me. We don't have to agree. We don't have to be exactly the same. Oh, and growing up Roman yeah. Catholic, I know what it's like to be yeah, in a religion and stuff. Yeah. So yeah, you know that too, Patrick. So for me, and I have a. Do you know I met Sherry Shepard? Like a year and a half ago. Oh, hold on. I hold forgot on. about yes, that. You, you, you dropped that yeah, name. Yeah, I just picked it up. Oh, right shut now. up, Tommy. <laughs> but I interviewed her and she was a delight and she knew everything and I have her email and Ooh. we like emailed each other and she's awesome and I have nothing but great things to say about her and no one should really freak yeah. out about this. It's not that bad. Yeah. Sit down, Sherry. <laughs> Okay, the next one is Liam Payne. This one is another like um, gray one. So he is arguably the hottest one in One Direction. Yeah. yeah. So did you watch the documentary of the sh of the show? Okay, I watched. I did, so he's yeah. sort of like the father figure of the group. I feel like. Yes. Um, so I mean, if anyone was gonna say something like this, I would have pictured it to be him. Probably. Yeah. So he was like, he tweeted about how much to the Duck Dynasty guys yeah. about how much he loves much the show, love. and he supports their family values or something. So he got some major backlash too. And then you're just kind of thinking, like, dude, even if you think that, seventy percent of your fans are are <laughs> gay. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're not girls. They're gay men. But this is the difference between Sherry Shepard, who's educate. Well, not. Greatly educated, I mean, but, I mean, but you're educated in life and old enough to know better. And this is youth she and stupidity. Finished high yeah. school. But this is youth and stupidity. I'm yeah. sorry, I'm just going to call it as he, it is. No, it's he youth is. and stupidity and not knowing better and not really truly understanding yeah. the impact of social media. And who knows? One of the One Direction guys might be gay anyway by the end of. Hmm. Hmm. Which one do you think? <laughs> which one do you wish, actually? Well, yeah. Nothing. Which one do you wish? This is Patrick? a fun little game. Uh, Let's go real quick. Zane. Ew. Zane, yeah, yeah. agreed. Hands no! Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> oh God! I, no, you know I'm what? I bet you anything. Lead. Go ahead. I bet you Liam is gay. You Liam, think so? Totally. This is his cover up. I bet you none of them are gay. Okay, the last guy that we're gonna talk about is uh, the Bachelor, who said. Uh, okay, let's talk about somebody really stupid. Yeah, for a second. one Pablo Galavis. He's so good looking, though. And I was gonna say handsome Aww. guy, but he shouldn't have opened. I mean, you know what I'm gonna say? What Wendy says with someone named like Juan Pablo. Yeah. I don't want someone like I want someone spicy and yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. dark. And so what did, he, but so what did he say? He said that if you're gay, you're a bit more perverted or something like that. He was he was like I mean we don't really know because English isn't his first language. I'm we sure. We don't know what the explanation was. Yeah. But essentially, he was saying like. Oh God, something like if you're gay, you're not a good role model to kids, and he's kind of linking it to pedophilia a little bit. Yeah, and then he was saying that 
a gay or a bi person would not be a good bachelor. And he said yeah. it's a bad idea. And and meanwhile, he's like in this house with 23 whores. And I mean, yeah. And, well, so and weird. my star magazine claims that he's still <laughs> in love with his wife, Carla, or his ex girlfriend, Carla, back in like, I don't know. Brazil or wherever he's from. Oh my God, I love that you still get those magazines. I read them all the time. I'm like, on the, mm, I'd love yeah. to read them afterwards with a bowl of cherries or something. Yeah, like, with a snack. A little snack. <laughs> with a snack. Absolutely. <laughs> but I mean, are you watching The Bachelor? Do you, have you, you're not no. a fan? I don't, no. I don't, I haven't, I've I never don't watched The Bachelor. I don't want to see women crying. Like, it doesn't make me happy. <laughs> There's nothing great about Unless The Bachelor. Unless it's on Days of Our Lives. Oh, well, absolutely. But that's not Days of Our Lives and Star Magazine's fine. Yeah, but, yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's all we have for gay news, but before we go, I want to tell you about a contest that's on outtv.ca. It's for a white party in Palm Springs. You can win two VIP tickets just by entering there. Adam's going to be going. Mm -hmm. You guys might be going. Yep. It's going to be a great show. It's the 25th anniversary, so yeah, it's going to be awesome. So that's all we have for today's show, and we hope to see you guys next time. Thank you for joining us, Thank Johnny. Thank you so much. That was Thank fun. You. Thank good. you. Thanks, guys. See you later. Bye. <laughs> oh, bye. oh, yeah. Oh, I didn't say <laughs> 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 <laughs>